Welcome to episode two of the ultimate podcast guide for beginners all about how to record your podcast. Over the past few years, I've gone from being obsessed with listening to podcasts to starting one as a hobby to eventually starting my own creative agency where I produce and launch podcasts for other creators. In addition to hosting my own show, Creator Club, I've helped tons of other creators of all sizes to start their own podcast. And I'm so excited to be helping you to start your podcast today. As we dive into the technical side of things, I just need to tell you there are so many ways that you can do this. And there really is no right way. The options are literally endless and really it just comes down to personal preference. But what I wanna do in these videos is show you ways that have worked for me and that I think would also work for you based on your particular circumstance. But really there is no wrong way to do this. So if you have already found an alternative way that works for you that I don't talk about in these videos, don't stress. That's perfect. Whatever works for you is great. These are just my suggestions. So in this video, I am gonna talk about three main different kinds of microphones that might work for you. One is recording with your phone. Another is recording on to a microphone and recorder with an SD card. And the third is recording directly onto your computer. I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of each system, what might be right for you, and how to actually use them. I'm gonna include the timestamps in the description below, so if you already know what kind of system you would prefer, you can jump ahead to that to hear about how to use it. But otherwise, I really encourage you to just watch through the whole video, get a sense of what the options are, and then you can decide what's gonna suit your circumstances best. The first option I wanna present to you today is recording on your phone. This is a great option for a very simple reason, and that is you already have it. It's essentially free. You don't have to buy any other equipment in order to use this. If you want to start your podcast totally for free, you can do that. You can just record into your phone and you might actually be surprised how good the audio quality can be if you do it right. In order to get the best quality possible, this is the process that I would recommend taking. In order to get the best audio quality possible, this is the process you will use to record your podcast with your phone. Find a small and soft place to record. I know that might sound kind of funny, but somewhere like inside your closet is perfect because it's a small space and you're surrounded by soft items like your clothes that will help reduce the echo. If it doesn't work to sit inside your closet, then you could hide under a blanket or a duvet, that will have a similar effect. Once you're comfortable in your little soft cave, remember what we're trying to do here is replicate a sound booth as much as we can just at home with the supplies that are available to you. Once you're in that position, all you're gonna do is open up your voice memo or voice notes app and then start recording. I would also recommend maybe holding the phone slightly above you to the side so that you don't have those popping sounds that you might get if you hold the phone really close. When you're done recording, you're just gonna press stop and then you can tap on the share button and you could either airdrop it to your laptop or you could upload it to Dropbox or Google Drive in order to transfer it to your computer for editing later. This is an example of what it sounds like when you sit under a blanket and record audio into your phone. <laughs> It really is that simple. It is a great way for beginners to get started. So just to review, the pros of this system are that it's basically free, it's very easy to use, and you can get started right away without getting any extra equipment. But the cons of this system are, it really only works for one person. You're likely not gonna hide under a blanket with your podcast guest. And you do really need to set yourself up in the ideal situation in order to get good audio. So if the air conditioning is running in your apartment or if you have a fan on, or you might even be able to hear the hum of a fridge, if you don't sit under a blanket, sit in the closet, those kinds of things in order to get the best audio possible. So it's not very flexible in terms of being able to be comfortable while recording, but you can definitely make it work. The next option, like I mentioned, is recording with a microphone and recorder that writes onto an SD card. So this is completely separate from needing a phone or a computer. The system that I have used for myself and for my clients' podcasts is the Zoom H5 recorder, but Zoom has a whole range of different microphone and recorder combos that might work for your specific situation, depending on how many guests you're trying to record at once. The setup that I use is a combination of the Zoom H5 recorder, 
plugged into XLR microphones. So don't get stressed if you're not used to this tech terminology. Literally all it means is the kind of connection that the microphone makes to the recorder. These are also unidirectional mics or mics that only take sound from one direction. This really helps with audio quality because it means it's only going to be sensitive to the sound that is directly in front of it. It's not going to pick up the room noises, the car going past, the air conditioner or whatever. It's going to be very specific to just picking up what is directly in front of it. It does mean that you need to speak pretty much into it, but people are used to that with this kind of microphone. It's handheld. This is what it sounds like when I speak directly into the microphone. Here's what it sounds like when I'm holding the microphone around it. I'm not actually talking into it. You can definitely hear a difference. This is a perfect setup if you are trying to record a podcast in person with multiple people. This allows you to record multiple people on different audio tracks, which is just revolutionary when it comes to editing. Basically what this means is there is going to be a different audio file for each microphone that's plugged into your recorder. This is great because later when you're editing, it means if you happen to have a guest who is very soft-spoken or maybe who is louder than you, you can adjust the volume independently of each other. And because these microphones only pick up what is directly in front of them, it means that you can be recording in the same room at the same time and you won't have echo from each other. Whereas if you just used two iPhones, for instance, they're both sensitive enough that they would pick up both people talking. But if you each have your own microphone of this variety, then it's only gonna pick up your own voice. So it just makes the whole editing situation so much easier. And I think that that will probably make more sense to you once we dive into editing in the next video, but just know, if you wanna record in person with multiple people, this is gonna be your perfect setup. So here's how it's gonna work. Once you have all the gear, you're gonna get out your Zoom H5 recorder and then you're gonna plug in your XLR microphones to the recorder. Then you want to turn it on and make sure that you press the button for each track. When the light shows up next to it, that means that it is live, it's recording. So you wanna make sure there's a light next to track one and track two, and then you can press the red button to start recording. Throughout the recording, if you find that one person is louder than the other, you can actually independently adjust the gain or how sensitive the microphone is to sound with the knobs on the recorder. When you're done, you can stop recording. You can take out the SD card and then you'll attach the SD card to your laptop. Honestly, probably through a dongle like this one if you have a new MacBook like me. Or of course you can put it into your computer's card reader if you have one, in which case I'm jealous. Then you're just gonna go into the SD cards file system, which looks like this. And then you can click and drag those files onto your laptop and save them somewhere where you can find them later. You'll notice that if you recorded with more than one person, both of those tracks will be in the same folder, likely Zoom 00001. And inside the file name will be the same with the exception of a different ending. One will have underscore TR1 and the other will have underscore TR2. This stands for track one and track two. Then you know if they have the same file name, it's from the same recording, it's just one for each microphone. So to review, the pros of this system are that you can record a podcast in person with multiple people and have perfect audio. And it's so easy for editing. It's gonna sound great every time. You're not gonna pick up the room noises and you're gonna make sure that your audio levels are the same, even if one person is more soft-spoken than the other. The cons of the system is that it doesn't work great for remote or online recording because you could be using it in person and then record onto your SD card, but then you would need your person on the other end to also have a different microphone. So. In general, it's better for recording in person and it is quite expensive. This whole system costs me about $800 Canadian, which I think would be similar to $500 US or a little bit more than that. So obviously it's a big investment. It's the kind of thing that you only wanna do if you know that every episode you're gonna be recording with multiple people in a studio type setting. So if you're trying to set up your own little podcast studio, this is perfect. But if you're thinking that you're mostly gonna do online interviews anyway, it might not be best for you. The third option, and honestly probably the most common option, is recording directly into your computer using a USB microphone like the Blue Yeti or something similar. This is perfect for recording solo episodes because it allows you to skip the step of uploading it to Google Drive or airdropping or importing off an SD card to get it on your computer. The audio file is just gonna automatically be recorded there. So then it's perfect to go from recording to editing super seamlessly. And it also works well for doing remote interviews online, either over Zoom or Zencaster or a similar software. Here's what the process is gonna look like. All you need to do is plug the microphone into your laptop before you start your recording. If you're recording solo and on a Mac, then you can open up QuickTime and click 
file, new audio recording. Then you just press the record button and start talking. And when you're finished recording, you can press stop and then just save it somewhere on your computer where you can find it later. This is a sample of what it sounds like when you use QuickTime on your Mac to record using a USB microphone. Of course, if you're gonna be doing an interview after you plug in your microphone, you would open up Zoom or Zencaster, and then you would just go into your audio settings to double check that your computer has detected that USB mic and is gonna be taking input from it. Normally it would do this automatically, but you just wanna make sure because it would be a shame to go to the effort of purchasing and plugging in a USB microphone only to have Zoom or Zencaster be recording from your laptop's microphone, which is definitely gonna sound worse. This is an example of what Zoom sounds like when I'm just using the laptop's internal speakers. This is what it sounds like. So hopefully it's a little bit clearer and a little less background noise. Then of course, the same way with anything, you press record when you're done, you stop recording and then you save it somewhere on your laptop where you can find it later. So to review, the pros of this system are that it is super user friendly. It's great for doing remote online interviews and it is fairly affordable compared to the Zoom H5 system. The only con with this system really is that if you ever wanna do in-person interviews, it is gonna be a little bit more difficult to record because both people are gonna to have to share a microphone that is really designed to just pick up the voice of one. So you're gonna to have to sit like weirdly close together and then it still probably won't sound as good as if you were recording with the XLR microphones on the Zoom H5 setup. But honestly, in our new world where we don't really see people in person, maybe just recording all your interviews online kind of makes sense anyway. Unless you're in a circumstance where you have like a co-host that you're frequently recording with. Anyway, I think this is generally a safe option for most people who are getting started because a lot of people are going to be either recording solo or doing online episodes. So getting a USB mic is probably your best bet to get started. All right, now that you're ready to record your episodes, you know which microphone you're going to get and you know the recording process. It's time to record your first episode and then... I'm gonna show you how to edit it. So that's what this next video is about. I'm gonna teach you the step-by-step -step process of editing with a completely free editing software that's available on Windows and Mac. So make sure you go watch that next. Of course, if you wanna support the channel, please hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it, but more than anything, just go and watch this next video. I'll see you over there. Okay, bye.